In this video, I'm going to go through a second example of using Kruskal's algorithm. Now, in the first example, I wrote down all of the edges in order of size. Now, when the algorithm is applied to something like this, this kind of network, then I don't particularly want to have to write down all of the edges in size. Um, it's just going to take me too long. So, what I need to do is I need to do this by inspection. Um, and that's, you know, that makes it a little bit more challenging, okay? So, as long as I um, shaded the edges as I go, saying, right, I've picked that one, I've picked that one, I've picked that one, and so on and so forth, and I'm keeping an eye on whether I'm building cycles or not, then it should, fingers crossed, go all right, okay? So, let's start. So, what I'm looking for are edges of the smallest weight and so I can see two ones here so both of those are going to get picked because they're not going to cause a cycle so uh, I can choose which order I'm going to do them in I'm going to do them in this order so DH is going to go first so DH of weight one so I'm going to have that one and I'm also going to have this one here which is CK okay so we don't have a cycle. OK, so the next uh, size I'm going to go for is 2. So are there any 2s? We've got a 2 there. And we've got a 2 over here. OK, so if I select DG, that's not going to cause a cycle. So DG 2. OK, so I'm having those. And then... Uh, I had the FJ, so FJ2, and I'm having that one as well. Okay, right, so I don't think there are any more twos, so I'm going to go for threes next. So we've got a three down here, so BC, so I'll have that one, because that won't cause a cycle. That's all good. And I've got LM up here. So that won't cause a cycle either. So LM with three. I'll have that one. OK. This is quite a good example because it's showing you kind of how crystals builds. You can see the edges appearing all over the place, which is going in uh, contrast to prims, if you've met it. That, uh, that grows out, OK? Whereas this one just uh, edges appear all over the shop. So, no more threes, so we're going to go for fours now. So, I can see a four here. Um, so, DE. So, DE with four. That's good. I'll have that one. I see another four here. So, EI. That won't cause a cycle, so that's all good. EI. I'll have that one. And I see another one here, EF. That won't cause a cycle either. So, EF. It's all good. Right, OK, are there any more fours? I can't see any more fours. So we're going to go up to fives now. So I can see one five, this one here, AD. That won't cause a cycle, so that's all good. OK, right. I don't think there are any more fives, so we're going to go on to sixes now. Um, so AB uh, with 6. Now, will that cause a cycle? No, that won't. So AB with 6, that's all good. Now, I have this one here, BE with 6. That would cause a cycle, OK? So I'm going to write it down, but I'm going to make sure I draw a line through it and go, right, I'm not having that one, OK? So that one's been excluded. Uh, there's another 6 up here, which is LH. Now, that won't cause a cycle, so I'll have that. Now, because, because of this, right, um, it, you can, if I'd selected, well, it, won't, it wouldn't be in this case, but you can have um, slightly different answers come up depending on the order that you have considered the edges, okay? So that can happen. 
um, just so you're aware. We wouldn't have selected EB um, because uh, we've connected these bits with AD. Okay, so uh, that's fine. Oh, we could have done, couldn't we? If we hadn't have done AB, if we hadn't have chosen AB and we looked at BE first, we would have chosen BE instead of AB. Okay, so that yes, actually, we could have selected BE. So uh, it depends on the order of choice. So we've gone through the sixes. Don't think there are any more sixes to consider. So we're looking at sevens now, um, because we still haven't uh, connected N. Now we've got M, we've got IM there, but that causes a cycle. So I'm not having IM. So I'm going to go up here now. IM of seven has been considered, but I'm not having it. And I can't see any more sevens, so we're going to go on to eights. So uh, eights, we've got MN and we've got NJ or JN. Now I could uh, select either of those. I'm going to select MN with eight. Okay, so that one's all good. Have that one. And now all of the vertices are connected. I don't need to go any further. Okay? So, um, if you are able to write them in one line, um, then do so. Okay? Just so it's clear um, your order of choice. Okay? So, we've got to the end. I don't need to write any more down. These are the edges that would be selected for my minimum spanning tree. So, MST total length is equal to. So I want to add these up. So we've got 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 6 plus 8. So I make it 49. Okay. And if I had to draw the minimum spanning tree, Then H33 looks something like this. So K's over here and G's over here. So we've got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N. So we selected D, H. Uh, with weight 1, then CK. Okay, so notice how the edges are springing up and how it builds. So DG is 2, FJ is 2, uh, FJ there, 2, uh, BC is 3, LM is 3, DE is 4, EI is 4, EF is 4, AD is 5, AB is 6, LH is 6, and MN is 8. Okay, and so that is my minimum spanning tree. That's how it looks. And you can see as we went through, there were a couple of situations where we could make choices where your minimum span tree and your answer would be slightly different. Okay? Um, and mark schemes would take account of that.